Perth, Western Australia. Filled with many options of public transport, like trains, buses, ferries. Oh, and did I mention buses? But there is one transport that not many people know about. One that stopped operating in 1958. Yes, that's right. We're talking about the forgotten Perth trams. According to a couple of sources, the first types of trams that served Perth was horse-powered trams. Although this tramway was short-lived, it played a huge part. This tramway has no official recording on when it opened, but we do know that this tramway operated from the General Post Office, which was back then located within the Treasury Building at the corner of St. George's Terrace and Barrack Street. The outlying terminus was said to be in East Perth. However, it seems that there was never was a horse tram provided to carry passengers. Rather, there was, it was believed, a horse tramway which ran from quarries just north of the CBD to the construction of the government house, situated in St. George's Terrace. For how long the horse tramway survived is not known, nor is the exact route, as information has not been found, although research does continue. The Perth Tramway opened in 1899 by an English company, Perth Electric Tramways Limited. Construction on the tramway started on the 30th of January 1899, with services commencing on the 28th of September 1899. It took them 241 days just to build the tramway. The first line was only just 4.8 kilometres long. It ran from Hay Street from East Perth, near the Wacker Grounds, to Thomas Street in West Perth. There was a spur line, or in other words, a branch line, that ran along Collins Street to Kings Park. Further lines were built in subsequent years, and those were Subiaco, along Hay Street and Rokeby Road to Thomas Street. Nedlands, extension from Subiaco, along Thomas Street and Broadway to Nedlands Baths. Wellington Street East, via Hill Street and Kingsington Street to Trafalgar Road. Wellington Street West to Thomas Street. Mounts Bay Road, Mount Lawley, Victoria Park via the Causeway and Albany Highway. Lincoln Street via Lord Street. North Perth, Leaderville via Newcastle Street and Oxford Street and Osborne Park extension from Leaderville along Main Street to Royal Street. The privately run tramways were profitable, but required funds for further expansion. The state government decided to purchase the trams and operations, and government control began on July 1st, 1913. The system would run as part of the Western Australian Government Railways, or WAGR. This would continue until 1949, when a separate Western Australian Government Tramways and Ferries, WAGT, department was established. One advantage of the arrangement was that tramcar bodies could be economically constructed at WAGR workshops at Midland Junction. A disadvantage was the new tram routes. The Collins Street to Kings Park Road route 
became abandoned in 1930. The worldwide depression of 1930s had effects similar to those in other towns and cities. Although people were less able to afford private transport, patronage on trams suffer also suffered. Due to high unemployment, fewer could afford to catch public transport. After years of steady increasing patronage, there was a sudden and marked decrease after the 1930. Maintenance of the fleet and infrastructure was difficult due to financial considerations. Conversion to trolleybus operation was found to be cheaper than upgrading and converting single track lines to double track. There had been continuing need for further tram cars to be built, but in the end this was possible only by reusing equipment from some older vehicles, as it turned out. The last new tram cars for Perth were 126 to 130, completed in 1932 to 34. Some lines did receive an extension, and those were Inglewood, extension to Salisbury Street, Victoria Park, extension to Patricia Street, and Wembley, extension to Alexander Street. Sadly, lots of lines did close, and those were Wellington Street East, replaced by Trolleybus in 1933, Westanis Road, Claremont Station, abandoned 1935, Claremont, replaced by Trolleybus in 1938, and Wembley, replaced by Trolleybus in 1939. Public transport, demand and usage was high during the war years, caused by rationing of fuel for private transport, and by high employment, especially in war-related industries. And although the fleet and infrastructure were of an age where maintenance would normally become heavier, much had to be deferred, materials and personal directed into the war effort and also a factor. Final system expansions occurred. Inglewood Line extended by 400 metres to reach Grand La Promenade. Victoria Park Line extended by 1.6 kilometres to serve the munitions factory at Welshpool. Closures. Crawley to Nedlands Line 1938. The depression, followed by the war, had thrown together a combination of factors, which eventually proved to be lethal for the tramways. An aging tramcar fleet, aging infrastructure, and years of delayed maintenance had all compounded by heavy use during the war years. The fact that much of the track was single, including some at the side of the road, would have meant additional expense if it were decided to modernise the tramway system. The shortage of funds for rehabilitation also applied to operations. Buses, as well as being more flexible and cheaper to acquire, would also be cheaper to operate, as they could be operated by one person, which was not possible for the Perth trams of the time. There was an additional feeling among many that trams were old, fashioned, and inflexible, and their overhead wires were unsightly increased the use of private cars, especially after the ending of petrol rationing in 1949. Reduced tram patronage and increased crowding on the roads, the trams were seen as a problem for the cars. Thus, it was a combination of financial problems, with a lack of will to overcome them, which ultimately caused the closure of the tramway system. On the 19th of July, 1958, tram number 66 ran Route 18 for the very last time. 
This marked the last journey of a public tram in Perth. The last tram was departing from Inglewood Terminus. Around 2,000 people came to the Terminus just to watch the tram leave, but yet only 200 people managed to get on board. The tram went to Inglewood, Mount Lawley and Highgate, and ended at Barrack Street Jetty. After it arrived at Barrack Street Jetty, it was then escorted by police and slowly travelled its last leg. Many of the old tram drivers and conductors were among, among the passengers. Perth's affection for the tram, or joy as its demise, was unmistakable. Nowadays, there is not much left to show that trams were even in Perth, but there is one group of volunteers out at Whiteman Park, 13 kilometres northeast of Perth. This group of volunteers is called the Perth Electric Tram Society. They allow everyone to still experience what is would have been like to ride a tram in Perth. They have a lot of old and historical trams, such as Tram 66, the last tram to run in Perth. You can check out more information about them by clicking it, clicking their website linked in the description. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you liked this, please do give it a thumbs up and share it. It would help me out a lot, and, it, and if it does do well, I might make more. Maybe even one about the Perth trolley buses.